everyone, it's LS, and this is going to be the patch 8.11 notes rundown. This is an absolutely enormous patch, so get ready for a pretty long rundown. And I'm actually pretty excited to jump into it. I like the ADC changes. I'm really excited for Pike's, uh, Pike's arrival. And so let's just go through everything. So I've already talked about Pike. I'm not entirely sure where he stands post PBE, so I don't know what his numbers are. I really do hope that he ends up being a jungler and not a support. Because I think if he does end up becoming uh, a support champion or something, I think that he just will not be very popular. I could be entirely wrong there, but there it is. Anivia, Q cooldown decreased to early ranks, Q damage ratio increased. So, uh, cooldown is down by 2 at rank 1, uh, and then it scales down to its former self. And then the damage ratio is up by 0 0.05 ability power. Uh, so it... Basically, you get 0 0.1 uh, ability power if you can manage to hit the pass-through and the detonation. So it's a nice little buff for Anivia. Is it something that's going to necessarily propel her into the meta? Absolutely not, especially when you consider what the current mid lane meta is right now and some of the other changes that are uh, present inside of this patch. Now let's move on to Graves. So this is a placebo nerf, so don't get your panties in a bunch. Graves is still going to be one of the kings of the jungle. Currently, he is basically perma-banned almost all the time on the Korean server. I've heard that he's perma-banned quite often on EU West. He's one of the best champions that you can pick in jungle right now. Losing three attack damage on his or his base AD doesn't change his clear. Uh, the only clear that it really maybe can impact, and even then I don't think that it impacts it. I think he o ends up overkilling it anyway would be red buff or like gromp or something. But for the most part, Graves farms the majority of his camps with his Q and just by having his E up and as long as you're utilizing the, his AoE on his auto attack, um, you're not going to even be phased by the attack damage nerf. Um, our collateral damage is up by 10 seconds at rank 1. This doesn't really change anything. Um, Graves is not a champion. I talk about this. Or he's not a champion that is reliant on having his R available. He's not a champion that when he has it up and it's off cooldown, you're thinking to yourself, okay, I gotta go, go, go. I gotta make something happen. Um, and so for that, this is also another placebo nerf. So do not think that these things are going to move him out of his current position inside of the jungle. It's not. Keep playing Graves any chance you can get and pray that these nerfs are read by someone foolish that does not end up banning Graves. Kha'Zix, R cooldown decreased at later ranks, but stealth duration decreased. Evolved R grants additional casts and stealth duration no longer grants stealth or movement speed and brush. Cooldown 100 to 80 seconds scaling to 100 to 70 seconds scaling. So... Not really uh, too big of a change here, so this is sort of a placebo. Um, stealth duration, 1.5 seconds to 1.25 seconds. This is definitely going to be noticeable. Evolve stealth duration, 1.5 seconds to 2 seconds. So um, these changes are pretty interesting. Kha'Zix is definitely a solo queue monster. I don't think that for competitive, uh, he actually belongs in the limelight. Uh, I've never really been a super big fan of Kha'Zix. Anyway, evolve cast 2 within 10 seconds to 3 within 10 seconds is obviously a nice buff. So... These changes for solo queue, uh, I guess, are pretty fine if you end up upgrading the, the Void Assault. However, uh, let's see here. Remove Brush Track. No longer passively grant stealth or movement speed when entering brushes. Well, this is horrible. So Kha'Zix is going to go back to the Kha'Zix. Actually, I take back everything I just said. I'm pretty sure he's dead. All right. Kindred, Mark uh, respawn time decreased. First Mark spawn earlier. Rift Scuttle assist now correct, co correctly collect Marks. Passive Mark of the Kindred, 50 seconds to 40 seconds. First Mark spawn time, 220 to 205. Assist on Risk Scuttler. Now appropriately uh, appropriately collect Mark. So the only thing that uh, is good here is if you can get a really good RNG. The fact that it's only going down by 10 seconds, this is a placebo buff. This is not going to magically make Kindred good because you're not getting stacks on cooldown anyway. So the reality is, is just because the, the mark comes up 10 seconds earlier doesn't mean that you're in position and able to capitalize on it, which means that in a majority of cases, I'm, I'm going to assume, uh, there are going to be instances where it could have had its old respawn timer of 50 seconds and it wouldn't change anything. You would still end up getting to it. It's 70 seconds or 80 seconds, and you would end up picking it up because it is extremely rare that Kindred is able to just go from point A to point B to point C to point D to point E and constantly keep collecting her marks. The really big change is right here, though. 15 seconds is quite notable, as I said. If you can get a pretty advantageous RNG spawn on her mark, that's really good. Um, 
And obviously the bug fix is really good. Do I think that it magically makes Kindred able to come into the meta? No, I do not. However, maybe I will come back to Kindred at the end of this patch rundown after we talk about the itemization changes to 80s. LeBlanc. LeBlanc now queue up casts on W and uh, W and RW in either order, so it's just a nice little change that doesn't really matter all that much. Lee Sin, energy restore on passive increase, Q, W, and E now apply cooldown reduction for the duration of the reactivation time. So these are all placebo changes, or placebo buffs as well. Um, energy restored on first hit, 20, 25, 30 to 20 to 40 scaling. Energy restored on second hit uh, is 10 to 15 scaling versus 10 to 20 scaling. So these are completely placebos. Lee Sin is often going in uh, for an engagement via an insect, or he's going in to likely overkill you, um, or he will be killing you by connecting onto you, slowing you, and then finishing you off with auto attacks. It's very rare that you're ever having to realistically ever utilize the additional energy that this sort of a buff would be giving to you, um, and then these are all just to sort of just help you out. So ultimately, just placebo buffs, Lee Sin is virtually in identical spot that he was just in in patch 8.10. Rakan, Q base shield decreased, E base shield decreased. For a support with so much hard engage, the sustain Rakan brings to lane is a bit overbearing. Base shield 22.5 to 150 scaling to 18 to 120 scaling. So this is actually pretty noticeable. Um, eventually this can amount to an auto attack uh, at certain points during the laning phase, and that is something that you do have to consider. But then when you factor in the battle dance change, this is even further adding up to two auto attacks or more, depending on how the trades are actually taking place. Does it mean that uh, Rakan is not still going to be a monster uh, in certain situations? And obviously you'll still see him paired with Zaya for, you know, to form Jakan. Um, but I think that these are, are pretty acceptable changes. Um, it should also be noted that this doesn't really impact mid Rakan for whoever is having fun with that and playing him there. Talia, you probably just want to read this one. So Talia's changes are super, super interesting. Um, movement speed is up by 15 at level 1, which is enormous. Health is also up by 30 at rank 1, so she's essentially getting an auto attack uh, worth of HP, which is quite big in mid lane trades. Passive rock surfing. Maximum movement speed goes from 20 to 40%, but now it's 30 to 45%. So she's going to be able to get to lane faster. She's going to be able to take even more abusive recalls um and just get on top of stuff that much sooner but the interesting thing here is the combat lockout five seconds to two seconds means that if you're fighting with her she's now going to have options depending on where the fight's taking place to potentially just disengage you by just exiting combat uh and then getting on top of her wall that much easier and then just sort of running away she can also obviously uh take a fight inside of her jungle and then run towards another fight if she managed to get out of a combat lockout and very extended trades uh, that are taking place, you know, on one quadrant of the map that are distances away from each other. So here's the really big changes. Q Threaded Volley no longer deals area of effect damage. Stones and Stones minions no longer take reduced damage from additional rocks. Talia no longer gains movement speed when on work ground. Casting Q on work ground no longer funds mana. So I know what you're thinking. You're thinking that she's dead. Well, I thought that too when I was first reading this. New, while on work ground, Q cost is reduced to one mana. That's really, really big. And what this also means is that she can cast Seismic Shove and Unraveled Earth a lot more freely and not have to worry about their mana costs as much because she's getting free Qs. It will mix up and change, obviously, some of her CS patterns, but it does mean that she can pull you that much harder if you're standing poorly in, main, uh, in mid lane, positioning uh, wrongly or incorrectly, uh, and she, she has a lot more freedom now to do this. Also, the cooldown, having stuff shaved off it so quickly, one of the things that we can talk about is the rank one is quite noticeable because this is normally where Talia would look to establish some sort of a poke. Um, but the rank two isn't that big. It is still 1.5 seconds. And then obviously rank three, this is normally the number that I talk about a lot when I'm doing patch rundowns because this is the most important number for the laning phase because this is generally rank five. So... Uh, she's only getting one second shaved off. So uh, playing around the old Talia Q uh, in terms of how you're playing around the cooldown and looking for trade openings or trade timings, whatever, it's going to be roughly the same. The only thing that's going to be different is obviously the level one and how freely she's able to use it on you if you're not able to CS against her very well and if she can crash her wave into your turret. Seismic shove, 16 seconds to 12 seconds flat. This is super, super, super big for her. Unraveled Earth, 7 uh, initial and explosion damage does take a pretty big hit though. 
Uh, so 70 to 150 scaling to 50 to 150 scaling. So the big thing here um, is that because Seismic Shove and E Unraveled Earth might become her wave clear options in mid lane, this is now kind of a big hit. Uh, but what all of her changes are saying to me is that support Talia, support Talia got really, really, really buffed. These are all massive, massive changes for support Talia. She basically has infinite harass in bottom lane. If she gets any sort of mono regeneration, it becomes so easy for her to endlessly poke bottom laners with Q and with E and then use seismic sub situationally. Um, so once we get to talking about ADCs or something, we can end up coming back to this. Um, but support Talia is a very real thing, I think, and it, it's something that is definitely in my mind right now. Uh, Urgot, collision radius decreased, base attack damage increased, passive damage to monsters increased early. Well, I like that. Maybe they're trying to make him a jungler. Are no longer roots Urgot while he is grinding a champion to death. Okay, so base stats, collision radius is 80 to 50. All right, base attack speed 0 0.595 to 0 0.625. I do like that. Echo and flames, max damage to monsters 25 to 365 scaling to 60 to 360 scaling. That's quite big. Um, especially because Urgot, he, he is a very, very good duelist, um, and he does actually have quite a bit of sustain, and so obviously having access to his passive inside of the jungle is okay, but the problem is, is that late game Urgot is still just, he's a disaster, he's a hot mess, he's something that you don't want on your team, he begins to feel terrible after four items, he basically feels like the same exact champion. At four items, in, or even at four items, he starts to fall off. His peak is generally around like three, three and a half items, and after that, it all just goes downhill. You take fights against him the same way. He basically dishes out the same amount of damage. He inherently feels just about as tanky as he was at four items, as he will feel at six items. The only difference is maybe if he has CDR, he gets a little bit more W casts, but... Oftentimes, he's not the center of a fight, and so the way that the fights end up unfolding around him, it almost doesn't even matter if he gets a few more Ws cast. Our Fear Beyond Death to go order. Urgot is no longer rooted while grinding a victim. This doesn't change the problems that Urgot's having. Urgot probably needs a little bit more attack range, uh, and then maybe some of his abilities need some changes up uh, if, you, if you want to begin having Urgot be a actual viable champion and not a niche pick that maybe comes out once in a blue moon. Victor, Q discharge damage increased at later ranks, R damage uh, ratio increased. Patch 8.9 mana change hit Victor harder than most mages. Um, I guess they're forgetting about the big patch change that uh, came a very, very long time ago that completely crippled Victor and removed him from the meta, but okay. Siphon power, um, 20 to 100 damage scaling to 20 to 140 damage scaling. R chaos storm, 0 0.6 ability power to 0 0.7. So let me try to break this down. What this ends up meaning is that Victor in laning phase is still dealing the same exact amount of damage, although he has a little bit more oomph inside of him when he is level 6. Um, so, despite that, mid-game Victor in total probably gets about 200 damage added to him. Is it magically going to make him better? No, because these aren't the things that are holding Victor back from returning to his former glory. Um, you're never going to be maxing Q first, although I have been an advocate in the past for Q max Victor in very, very specific matchups. Um, and thus, because of that, you can't actually look at the increased damage until you start looking at around 80, 110, 140, which are the three later ranks. And this is ultimately when Victor has finished maxing E and he's beginning to max Q. So you don't actually end up seeing these buffs until the mid game. And thus, because of that, you have to really wonder how effective is it and how good is it? Now, late game, Victor will definitely get off multiple Qs, and so from there, you could see that maybe he gets 300 damage added to his Q or something, and then his R, I mean, you're looking at like, I don't know, 500, 600 total damage in a late game team fight gets added to Victor's kit, assuming that the team fight goes long and the Victor player is competent. So, uh, that's pretty much it for Victor. I do not think that this is going, it, it will not magically make him viable and he's not going to become this big menace or something. Xinjiao, base attack damage growth decreased, E slow decreased. So attack damage growth, uh, 3.3 to 3. So not the end of the world. Uh, audacious charge, the audacity they have to only nerf him like this. 
uh, 50% slow to 30% slow. So Xin Zhao is essentially still the same exact champion that he was before, and this is just a placebo nerf, so expect to potentially see him when LCS comes around in a couple of weeks. Zyra, E root duration increase. Zyra contribute, contributes slightly less in skirmishes than we'd like, but we're definitely not comfortable increasing her already high damage. Some extra crowd control should give her more of an impact in these small fights. Well, this is not some extra crowd control. This is a massive, massive buff, I think. Um, getting a quarter of a second on rank one, considering how Zyra trades and how obnoxious her plants are, this is kind of big. Uh, so this isn't like the Zoe 0.25 mean. This is entirely different because of the nature of how Zyra and her companions end up dealing damage to you. Um, getting a quarter of a second added onto her root at rank 5 is nice. Is it magically going to make her come back into the meta? No, I don't think so. Do I think that she could situationally appear into the meta? Absolutely. I've been very vocal about that for quite some time now. Ever since the support changes, I do think benefited her, and I just don't think that she's actually getting the love that she deserves, uh, I still think that she's viable, so, um, well, situationally viable. Uh, marksman base stat adjustment, so buckle up, because we're, we're in for a little bit of a ride here. Um, so, you know, simplifying it for you, uh, all of the ADs are a little bit weaker early on, and then they're stronger once the mid-game approaches, so this is applicable to every single AD. Um, the most interesting ADs, obviously for me here, is Lucian, uh, because of the way that his passive works, um, Ezreal, because his base AD is directly affected by the fact that he goes Trinity Force. One of the things that is also interesting for me here is that Corky is not listed here, so I guess he's no longer classified as a, a marksman or an AD. And then uh, I'm a coach, by the way, but I don't actually still know if Callista has that 0.9 AD thing. So... Those are the, the main ADs that I'm concerned with, and obviously Jin, um, when I'm looking at all of these changes, but this is not really that problematic. The way that you look at this is, fortunately for you guys, you're seeing that they are losing attack damage. Well, uh, Riot added something at the very end of the patch that makes it so you're not going to have to magically learn CSing this patch, because if you knock a minion to 4 HP, it'll die anyway. Uh, so you're not going to have to relearn how to CS and stuff, sort of like when Orianna got changed a really, really, really long time ago. I want to say it was in Season 4 or something, and it actually became different to CS with her. So you guys aren't going to have that trouble uh, with these 80s. Um, so 80 carries, like level 8, 9, 10 forward, are buffed. Uh, but they are a little bit more vulnerable early on, but that's not going to be noticeable. Now let's talk about some of the other stuff uh, before we get into the AD itemization, and then I'll talk about AD carries as a whole, and what I mean is the champions, and what I think the itemization and these type of changes will ultimately mean. Um, Hunter's Machete Compensation, so Master Yi, Nocturne, and Diana, I'm sure a lot of players on the Chinese server are excited about this, um, get a little bit of extra love. I don't think that it's magically going to make Nocturne uh, appear in the meta. Diana is a absolutely atrocious champion who is entirely balanced around her numbers, uh, because if her numbers are too good, then her kit is just way too versatile, and she's just way too oppressive to play against. So Diana's probably looking at something like needing a rework until we're going to ever see her again. Um, okay, now let's jump into the items. So Storm Racer, total cost 3,200 gold. It's a BF sword, a pickaxe, and a dagger, so a little bit of an awkward itemization, and then 725 gold. Attack damage is 70, attack speed is 30, so right off the bat, this is kind of interesting. Unique passive, Storm Zeds, if you haven't attacked in the last 3 seconds, scaling down with attack speed, your next basic attack will critically strike for 160% damage, plus 1% per 1.5% critical strike chance, max 200%, and grant 10% movement speed. So this is obviously huge on someone like Jin. Um, this is good on Jin uh, champions that can make use of kiting you and chasing you down uh, with critical attack speed and making use of the base movement speed. I don't think that this is going to appear on Graves because I think that Graves just has other items that he concerns himself with, uh, although maybe it, it ends up being seen on Jungle Graves uh, as an alternative to some of the attack speed items that he ends up picking up. Um, so... This is interesting, but let's let's talk about some other items first. Uh, Infinity Edge, crit, try more crit. So the icon's been updated. I do think that this definitely looks like it is changing its sexual orientation. This looks severely 
less masculine than the previous Infinity Edge. I don't know what, what you know, like this is just really weird. Um, but anyways, critical uh, strike chance, 20 per, uh, so all of this stuff is removed. Attack damage is up by 10. Total gold cost, however, is up by 300. Doubles your critical strike chance. Okay, so all you need to get to now is 50% uh, crit. 15% of your critical strike damage is converted to true damage. This is huge. Huge. For someone like Caitlyn, someone like Tristana, okay? These are really, really, really big. And then obviously even Jin probably likes this uh, if, he, if he's critting often. Um, Orn's Master Rework Upgrade, they obviously updated that there. Essence Reaver, the ultimate power spike. Okay, so total gold cost is down by 200. No more critical strike tra trance. Basic attacks restore 1% of missing mana. After you cast your ultimate, your next basic attack within 10 seconds grants Essence Flare for 8 seconds, granting 30% attack speed and causing basic attacks to refund 20% of your remaining non-ultimates cooldowns. So what this is saying to me is uh, saying Ezreal just is going to have a party with all of his abilities um, if he ends up casting his R. Uh, the basic attack makes it so that he can't go Oom. We also talked about Ezreal way earlier on with the Trinity Force, but then the question becomes is does he fit this into his new build with double tier? Um, and that's a question that Ezreal players will ultimately have to ask themselves. Um, especially because your next uh, basic attack within 10 seconds grants the Essence Flare, and then you just get 8 seconds of activity of being able to spam all of your abilities. This will make you really, really slippery. A champion that will absolutely love this item is Lucian. Lucian will fall super, super in love with this item. Um, another champion that... So this has a 30 second cooldown. Another champion that could potentially really, really like this item is also Corky. Uh, because Corky just has his R up whenever he wants. He casts it. He gets act, you know, he gets to use his proc, uh, his gets to use his bomb, his Gatling gun. He gets more access to Valkyrie. He's, he becomes sort of slippery. Corky gets to feel like he's Ezreal again. He gets to go back in time 30 years, maybe grow a few inches, you know, stop being five foot six and then maybe six foot four. Maybe that makes Corky come back. Even though Corky's current itemization path is a little bit weird, he can potentially fit Essence Reaver in somewhere. Um, this is just super, super fantastic. Another champion that you have to consider when you're thinking about Essence Reaver is Jace. Jace is going to potentially love this. Another champion that you might think of when thinking about Essence Reaver is Jax, because Jax is a champion that becomes extremely flexible after two items. He can actually go into a lot of different itemization paths depending on what is necessary for the game. And Jax with a lot of CDR has a lot of leap strikes and he has a lot of counter strikes, which means that he can be pretty difficult to deal damage to, and it can be really difficult to hold him down, and then he'll get a lot of empowered auto attacks. So Essence Reaver, I think, will in some champions be a pretty situational item depending on the game state and for champions that tend to be very flexible after two or three items. Jace comes to mind in that regard, obviously Jax. As for like a staple item on a champion, I think that Essence Reaver is basically saying uh, Lucian. Um, another situational item where maybe this can have a play is Master Yi, although I'm not entirely sure. Uh, if Master Yi would like that all that much. Champions with very heavy ultimates and that are only wanting to commit to fights for short periods of time are not going to like Essence Reaver, obviously. Now let's move on to... Um now let's move on to Last Whisper. Bonus armor penetration shifted to total armor penetration and decreased. So 35% of targets t uh, bonus MR to 10% of the targets total MR. So these changes are applied to Lord Dominix and Mortal Reminder. Giant Slayer has been removed, as has the 0-20% to 20 based on health difference, bonus physical damage against enemy champions with greater maximum health than you. So this gives champions uh, like Riven... Um, it gives champions like Riven, it gives champions like Renekton, it gives champions like Jace, um, it gives champions like Rengar, all of these hard-hitting champions that want to just eviscerate you right off the map and straight into death, um, a lot more power back, because they, they no longer have to feel bad about itemizing into Last Whisper. The fact that you can just get access to the 10% target's bonus armor and then potentially just ramp into your third core item and then finish or complete to Lord Dominix or Mortal Remind later, I think is also obviously really good. Um, so already we're seeing a lot of Jace potential buffs, Jax potential buffs, uh, Renekton, uh, obviously going to love this quite a lot. 
Um, and anyone that's just trying to assassinate you. Uh, Zed is going to really, really like this. Talon is going to really, really like this. Um, so all of the bruisers that have the option to basically be a pseudo-assassin and assassins really, really like these changes. Additionally, 80 carries are definitely going to like these changes if the enemy team is trying to have multiple tanks um, or just gives 80 carries an option if they end up getting locked on an item. Because oftentimes when you're playing ADC, sometimes you can be at three items and not feel like you have a very good item to get next. And then often you end up defaulting to like a Guardian Angel or a Bloodthirst or you get a Mob, uh, mob Malmordius uh, and you already have your QSS or something. So all of these are really, really good buffs in that regard. Critical Strike items. Average cost of Critical Strike items has been increased. 400 gold to 600 gold on Brawler's Gloves, which isn't that big, but the big chain, uh, because you, you never almost buy Brawler's Gov by itself. So the, the real change that we have to look for is the zeal. Uh, 1200 gold to 1300 gold, the critical strike chance being reduced by 5%, that doesn't matter because you're all lucky in my eyes anyway. Rapid Fire Cannon, 2600 gold to 2900. So the big red flag to me here is that all the crit items getting changed I think further enables champions that can just be like Lucian or Ezreal. Um, the fact that critical attack damage ADCs are being delayed in their power spikes by a little bit does mean that champions like Ezreal or even like Callista getting their earlier wake-ups makes them that much scarier, makes them that much stronger. Champions that can hold on to, you know, recipe components of a core item get bolstered. Champions that can be extremely powerful with just one core item and not have a reliance on other uh, attack damage items or crit speed or attack speed items, they also get bolstered. Um, so one of the things that's missing here is Guinsu's. Guinsu's is still not touched and it doesn't look like it, it's going to be touched. So champions that are building Guinsu's like Kog'Maw um, are in a way still kind of in a okay place. It, it's not like their impact has been hit. I feel like the changes to the itemizations have buffed Ezreal's standing, but then when you, you know, you think about, um, you think about some of the champions that exist for ADC, and you think, well, what does this mean for Tristana? What does it mean for Sivir? What does it mean for Kai'Sa, Jin? you know, yada, 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 Caitlyn? Obviously, Caitlyn comes to mind. Obviously, Twitch comes to mind. Uh, so do these changes end up meaning that Twitch and Kate and all these champions can magically come back into the meta? Well, no, it, it doesn't. Because you have to consider all the changes and what it means for mid lane and top lane. Um, because when you have champions like Renekton potentially coming back, or Jace potentially coming back, uh, you have to wonder what does that mean for certain AD carries if they're just going to end up being sitting ducks. Um, so the obvious standouts to me is Ezreal, um, and then obviously Caitlyn, uh, Tristana are obvious. Um, I think that the fact that Kog'Maw wasn't really touched I think that the fact that Kai'Sa basically wasn't touched is obviously also really, really good. Um, when you're thinking about champions that haven't really seen the light of day in a while, like Jinx or like Twitch, uh, you have to wonder, well, how effective is it for them? Um, I think that obviously for Jinx, she really loves Infinity Edge Change. I think that she also really loves Lord Dominix. Um, I think obviously for Twitch, they really like these changes. So. Depending on how the meta shapes up for support champions and mid champions and whatever, it can impact what ADCs will be allowed through. If Ezreal continues to be really, really, really strong, then you'll probably end up seeing a rise of Sivir because Sivir is absolutely loving all of these changes and these buffs. So in that regard, the teleport meta, you know, having safety in bottom lane, maybe Jin ends up coming back, although I don't know if he'll end up being a staple by any means because of other problems that he's been having throughout the last few months. Um, but champions like Draven, I think they get hurt by this patch. I don't think that they're seeing enough love uh, because of the way that Draven likes to itemize. Um, and I think that the other problems that Draven has fundamentally as a champion makes it difficult for him to come back. The utility, when you think of Ash, uh, is she really getting that much benefit uh, from any of these items. Well, I mean, Essence Flare on Ash 
It is kind of nice. You cast the ultimate, but sometimes Ash is just casting the ultimate from half a map away when she's in the fog of war. So unless she's getting to cast her ulti point blank, she's not really able to make use of Essence uh, Reaver. You're not picking Ash to dish out massive amounts of damage, so the last Whisper changes aren't super, super important for her. And obviously, Infinity Edge, yes, uh, she would like Infinity Edge, absolutely, but Ash isn't picked for these reasons, so I don't think that Ash is magically going to come back into the meta. Um, so I think Ezreal, Jin, Jinx, Kai'Sa, uh, Kalista, Kog'Maw are all on the map. I think that Sivir is also on the map. Lucian still has fundamental problems with his kit and his range and other stuff that's going on with him. Okay, I do not magically think that these two items will suddenly be able to propel him into S tier. Um, so with that being said, and also uh, it should be noted that um, some of the other problems that he, he's facing is that he tends to fall off quicker than other ADCs. So that's pretty much it. Um, okay, so lifesteal items. I think this is kind of a joke though. Gold cost decrease, 3,400 gold to 3,200 gold, Bloodthirster. This, in, this entire item just needs a rework. Because ADCs are getting their lifesteal from elsewhere, and the shield that you get from Bloodthirster, it doesn't feel massive. It doesn't really speak to you. And because Bloodthirster comes in as a fifth or a sixth item, it doesn't really matter that you're giving it a 200 gold decrease. The item itself is just inherently really, really weak. Blade of the Ruin King going down by 200 gold. We talked about some of the other champions like Cog, uh, like Ezreal, who can definitely still have the option to build it, and having this kind of an item decreased is even more beneficial for them if we talk about how quickly they can reach their wake up versus the fact that the crit ADs are going to be slowed down a little bit. So anyways, uh, Banner of Command, uh, oh, let's talk about these items. Uh, Maw of Malmordius, uh, total magic resistance 45 to 50, I really, really like that. Shield value, 300 plus 100% of bonus magic resistance. Um, okay, so it's a nerf? Oh, bonus magic resistance. Oh, it's situation, it, it's sometimes a nerf, but I, I think for the most part it's going to end up being a buff. Uh, unless I'm thinking wrong on something. Guardian Angel, cost increased armor increase. So it goes up by 400 gold, so this is obviously... So now the champions that you're thinking about here are Renekton. They are Jace. It is Fiora. You know, those types of bruisers that really want to get in on you. Guardian Angel is definitely an item that you associate with Renekton, and I think that Renekton has a lot of potential to actually resurface on this patch, depending on how the meta shapes up elsewhere and whatnot. So 400 gold is a lot to ask. Um, that that's, this is a really big nerf to GA. And the, the sad thing is, is that only select champions are really going to feel it in the mid game transition. And then the late game carries or the late game people that are just picking up guardian angel as their sixth item, just to have its passive available. They don't really care about that, but it is a very, very big nerf to the mid game pseudo assassins or bruisers that want to itemize it, especially if they're ahead to just further add salt to the wound. Banner of Command, enhanced minions are highly resistant to magic and physical damage rather than entirely immune to magic damage only. So, cooldown reduction being removed is really, really sad. Now grants the affected minion 70% damage reduction from champions, which now means that it can also be built against, you know, AD champions. Banner enhanced minions now appear as slightly larger minions on the minimap. So, basically what this says to me is that it is only going to still be built in some situational matchups it's no longer going to be the nightmare of mid lane where even champions like kossadin are building banner of command in mid uh what this also means is that uh we're probably going to see a shift out of minion dematerializer uh being a staple on some of the mid lane mages because they don't actually have to worry about banner of command that much anymore the cooldown reduction being lost from it is even quite impactful for top laners that really could utilize the cdr i think that this for the most part has successfully killed the item um but it'll still be built the same way that banner was built like a year ago you know like the heimerdinger players in solo queue that they would just build banner of command or like the teemo players that would build zz rot banner and just split push i think situationally um it can still be built by top laners or tanks and definitely still supports for Baron plays. But outside of that, I don't think that it's going to be the mid lane menace anymore. Shirelia's Reverie. 
Um, total cost is up by 150, so you need one more minion wave in order to get it. Base mono region 0 to 100%, that speaks to me a lot about Galio. Movement speed 8 to 5%, and active cooldown 6 to 90%. So I think for champions like Galio, this is obviously a really big buff. It's obviously a really big nerf to a champion like um, uh, Vladimir. And this is also a really big buff to the supports that end up getting Shirelias uh, inside of you know early to mid transition. Um, like Morgana or whatever, uh, Rakan, whatever else they, they build it in solo queue. Um, enchantment, Runic Echoes, now builds out of Fiendish Codex rather than Lost Chapter. Ability power increased. So I really like this change. Total cost is unchanged, gets 20 more ability power. I think that AP junglers still need a lot more love, and I still think that the changes that they made to Runic Echoes was a complete joke. Please give us back the MS. Now let's talk about some of the runes. So Minion Dematerializer, initial delay 155 to 240 seconds. This doesn't do anything because it's impossible to have Banner of Command anyway by four minutes. So it's not impacting any of the really, really early lane phase things except for maybe the cannon being eaten right away. That's the only change. Um, Sorcery, Nimbus Cloak. Battle Majors should feel good about a rune that helps them uh, get or stay in a fight when they push their go button. Shortly after casting your ultimate, gain 100 movement speed, decaying over the next 2.5 seconds. For the duration of the movement speed increase, you can pass through units. So, a lot of people, uh, when I just read this on stream a little while ago, um, they mention champions like Kha'Zix or something. Champions that want to utilize water walking and celerity because the early and mid game inherently is a lot more important than pressing your ultimate and getting a little bit of a luxury boost to it, uh, does not mean that you're going to drop either one of them and suddenly pick up Nimbus Cloak. However, champions that didn't need to utilize both Celerity and Water Walking now do have another option available to them. Um, the cooldown being 60 seconds does mean that it synergizes, I think, a little bit more with junglers than it does mid laners. However, some of the mid laners that instantly speak to me uh, when I see this is something like Galio, because it means that he can land into a fight and run at the opponent with a lot more ease and get off his taunt if they did manage to escape the radius of his knockup. Um, obviously, I think a, a champion like Nocturne probably benefits from this, because I don't think Nocturne actually needed water walking or celerity, um, or he didn't need both of them. Uh, so in that regard, I think this is really, really good. Um, champions that need water walking and celerity, though, that would like Nimbus Cloak, like Olaf, I think it's really, really bad. Um, champions that used to really like Ultimate Hat because it would grant them, you know, the, the cooldown like Kassadin or like Vigar or stuff, they're not going to like Nimbus Cloak. Um, another champion that might like Nimbus Cloak, uh, because he does like to take Celerity, but the problem is, is then do you trade, uh, Gathering Storm for Nimbus Cloak? And I think that the answer is no, because if you're just playing properly, you don't need the added benefits of Nimbus Cloak from mid lane, and obviously the champion that I have in mind is Twisted Fate. So, don't expect to see too many people, or at least I, ex I don't expect to see too many people take Nimbus Cloak. I think that it'll primarily be seen on junglers and supports in very, very specific situations, and it's obviously going to be champions that can utilize it. Um, another champion that could potentially utilize it would be like Pantheon, right? But the problem is that Pantheon loves Celerity and Water Walking, so he doesn't want to drop either, and Pantheon's not magically going to go into the Sorcery Tree uh, as his primary and give up Electrocute from Domination. Um, so maybe if you think about, like, top lane Pantheon or something, uh, if he has Airy as his main keystone, well, does he want Nimbus Cloak or does he want Monoflow Band? And I think you want Monoflow Band. So there's a lot of problems there. Um, and then other champions like uh, Vladimir um, or Swain. Well, Swain is an abomination in himself right now, so I don't think that Nimbus Cloak is actually going to matter all that much to him. Uh, Vladimir, however, is a champion that could definitely benefit from Nimbus Cloak, and I do think that the luxury of the movement speed is not really just a luxury to Vladimir because of the nature of how he engages and how he likes to play out the team fights. So I think that that's pretty good. Um, now let's move on. Ultimate Hat has been removed, but it has been moved to another tree. So. Hail of Blades. One of the goals of runes is to give champions options about which tree they go into based on how they want to play. Hail of Blades. Gain 50 to 100% attack speed for the first three attacks made against enemy champions. If more than 1.5 uh, seconds elapse between attacks, this effect will end. Hail of Blades allows you to temporarily exceed the attack speed limit. Thank God scripting no longer exists. Cooldown 5 seconds out of combat. Um, 
I don't know if this means that champions like Kog'Maw and Twitch will spec into Domination solely for Hail of Blades. Um, if there are champions that will go into that, I do think that it would be them. I think it would be something like uh, Jinx, because this is basically giving them lethal tempo, but as a, a rune uh, in, a, in a tree that they don't that they could potentially get a lot of benefit from. Uh, ultimate Hunter, this is now Ultimate Hat. However, you get your ultimate gains 5% reduced cooldown plus an additional 2% per bounty stack. Um, so this is obviously really sad because you get 15% Ultimate CDR, um, but you're ne I, I can't ever imagine you ever wanting Ultimate Hunter over Ravenous Hunter or Ingenious Hunter. I think the, those are the two, right? It's the, the MS one and the reduced cooldown on items. Oh, Hail's a keystone. Hail's a keystone? What? It's fucking useless. It's terrible. I take back everything I just said. I take it, I take it all back. I take it all back. I take it all back. I'm a coach, by the way. Anyways, let's move into precision. Fleet footwork. Haste, 30% to 20%. Crit heal no longer gives an additional healing from critical strikes. Percentage heal on minion, 60, 30 melee range to 120 melee ranged. Uh, okay, so this is all removed. Um, so I think that the haste being changed is definitely going to be felt because it means that you're missing tier one boots. Uh, and then obviously the crit heal It'll be felt, but it's not why you're taking the keystone. You're taking it more for the utility uh, that it grants with the haste and everything else. So uh, I don't think that it's the the end of uh, of this. Um, well, let me think a little bit more about domination tree, though. Um, when I'm thinking about a uh, champion like Cog or whatever, how do I? I don't. I don't even know how to utilize this stuff. When I'm thinking about the domination tree, I mean, if you have it in here. Uh, you're not going to take Electrocute, you don't use Sudden Impact, you don't use Cheap Shot. These are entirely wasted on AD carries. They don't want to be going down into this tree. The only thing that you could argue is maybe they get Eyeball Hunter, and then right here, you don't do anything either. Um, so, I, I don't know. Uh, so, I'll just move this a little bit more. Y you don't want any of this stuff on ADC. So, yeah. Anyways, um... Now let's move on to turrets durability. I really, really, really like this change. Um, so inhibitor turret health is 3,600 to 3,300. Nexus turret health, 3,600 to 2,700. So split pushers are getting a lot more love because if they can split push at the correct time, they can actually just get that turret down that much sooner. However, if you're able to successfully defend a turret, the health per five seconds is going to go up. But I do think that this is a change in the right direction to provoke or to... Uh, promote more aggression and obviously enhance how effective turret sieges and poke can be. Uh, turret gold. This is a massive, massive buff. Um, so inner turret local gold reward. 175 gold to 300 gold split amongst champions. Really, really, really big. This is an entire minion wave being granted to you. Uh, global gold reward. 125 gold to every allied champion to 100 gold. So um, as long as you're within close proximity... This is a lot better for snowballing you. This is just really, really, really good. I like the two changes that Riot just made to turrets. I think this is definitely an A+. Jungle, Baron Nasher. Attack speed decreased, base corruption damage decreased, special uh, attacks no longer apply corruption. Uh, Baron attack speed, 0.75. All right, so all of this stuff does not matter all that much. Uh, this doesn't matter all that much. Scuttle Crab. This is uh, one of the changes I really like. Respawn duration, 135, or... 2 minutes and 15 seconds to 3 minutes. So, oh, oh. you like that? You like that? 2 and a half minutes. You like that? Okay, nice. Quick mass. I'm from America, by the way. Donald Trump. Anyways, shrine duration, 75 seconds to 90 seconds. I like the fact that the shrine duration is extended. I like the fact that the respawn time is increased. I think that it gives people more time to get to it. I think that it you know, can even promote aggression around it even more. I do not think, I do not think Scuttle Crab is broken. I think that everyone has been ridiculous. 
Uh, since it's come out, I think that it is completely over-exaggerated by trying to claim that it's League of Scuttlecrab or something. It's absolutely not. Your laners are not compromising their lane state in competitive just to go and get you a fucking crab. If your laner has the option to freeze the lane or slow push and crash and shut up a dive, they are not going to drop fucking everything to go and get you a crab. So now that I like that uh, the respawn timer being delayed will further decentivize people to uh, drop everything and go and get their jungler, the crab. Um, because it, it, it's not that important. Is it nice? Does it feel good to pick up when you're on the way? Absolutely. There's a lot more going on in early game, and the state of lanes are infinitely more important than capturing a fucking crab. Anyways, jungle monsters experience slightly increased at later levels, 247 to 388 scaling to 247 to 411 scaling. I do like these changes um, because jungle right now in the mid game, specifically around level 5, 6, 7, 8 for junglers does feel bad. I think that these types of changes are really, really good. Um, and I, I do think that it's something that you can end up feeling uh, as a jungler. Last hit assistance. This is something that I talked about uh, a little bit earlier on. Uh, every patch after 8.11, they'll reduce the number by 1. So if you knock them in into 4 HP, it'll end up being CS for you anyway. ARAM, no one cares. I'm just kidding. Everyone cares. Uh, ping distance volume, this is kind of nice, but, I mean, people that are uh, deaf or people that just don't play with game sounds anyway, I mean, it's not going to affect them. Instant feedback. We're sprucing up reform cards with the clarity pass sometime this patch. It's great. Bug fixes, okay, level up rewards for it. What? Who has the time? What? Uh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Um, anyways, as for the skins, um, this is not going to make the champion played, and I don't know whose idea it was at the Riot office to be like, you know what? Hold on. What champion should we make a skin for? And then someone fucking raises their hand and says, how about Diana? When's the last time anyone saw diana when this fucking thing is not selling so now anyways let's talk about vladimir skin though the vladimir skin is exquisite it is definitely good whoever raised their hand at the riot office and suggested that they make the vladimir skin however he's a, he's he's a good person all right the vladimir skin very good you're a vladimir player you should get this skin i really like this skin all right all right, so anyways, um, it also even has nice chromas. The Vladimir skin's not ugly, you're ugly. All right, thank you. So now, moving on, um, moving back up uh, all the way over here. Uh, well, I said that I would talk about Kindred again, and so when we go and look at some of the items that have been changed and whatnot, uh, you have to ask yourself, uh, Kindred does not use Eye Edge. Uh, does Kindred potentially use Storm Razor? Potentially, yes. Um, but because Kindred, I mean, what other items is Kindred going to be getting? Well, Kindred does end up getting Critical Strike, uh, or Kindred can end up itemizing into Crit. So Storm Razor might actually be a potential item on her, like, fourth or third or fourth item. Um, as for Essence Reaver or something, no, you're not casting your ultimate and then for eight seconds dealing zero damage to everyone inside of its circle because that completely reduces the entire purpose of this item. So... In that regard, the only item that Kindred is maybe getting some usage out of is likely going to be Storm Razor. Uh, so, because of everything else that I said, I do not expect Kindred to magically come back into the meta. Now let's just do a quick recap on what champions I think are... Just a quick rundown. Anivia, competitive? No. Solo queue? No. Graves? Competitive? Absolutely. Solo queue? Absolutely, if you're trying to win. Kha'Zix? Competitive? No. Solo queue? Gutted. Kindred? No. Completely placebo. LeBlanc? Whatever. Lee Sin? Whatever. Rakan? Still in the same exact state that he was in before. Talia? I think that she might be a support champion. So, in solo queue, absolutely fucking not. Competitive? Potentially, yes. Okay. Um, now, however, solo queue, high MMR? Maybe. But I think that support? I do think that there's actually potentially a lot of merit there. Urgot? No. Competitive, no. Solo queue, yes. Solo queue, yes. Uh, the reason that I say that is because people aren't very good at abusing what makes Urgot a bad champion. In competitive, he will never see the light of day. 
In solo queue, he can actually be quite a monster and he can definitely be oppressive. So all of these changes are obviously really good for him. Um, however, uh, the Echoing Flames change probably isn't going to be applicable unless he's somehow able to be a jungler, but that just sounds really weird. Maybe if this champion can be a jungle, his mid-game oppressiveness can be worthwhile, but I don't think so. Victor, complete placebo. Um, solo queue, competitive, same standing as before. Xin Zhao, same standing as before. Zyra, it's a placebo buff, but it is, well, not a placebo, it's, no, it's not a placebo buff, it's just an outright buff. Zyra, really, really, really good buff. All of these things, already went over them. So that was it for the patch 8.11 notes rundown. I will probably end up making another video on Pike. I pray to the heavens that Pike is indeed a jungle champion and not a support. Otherwise, I'm going to be really, really, really sad. And I think that that is pretty much it. Uh, one of the things that I will touch on, just because I saw it in the corner of my eye, is Yasuo. Um, Yasuo is already in an absolutely bonkers state, and yes, he does build Infinity Edge. Yes, some of his other power spikes did end up getting hit, but Yasuo did get a lot of love inadvertently uh, throughout this patch. But I didn't feel the need to comment on Yasuo because Yasuo is already absolutely insane and busted. And if you didn't know that, I'm just going to check out some of the Fnatic Caps highlights that have uh, been on Reddit in recent days. Anyways, I, got, I hope that you guys enjoyed this patch rundown. I'm really excited to play this patch. I think that it looks really, really, really cool.